This week, we are seeing the launch of Diablo Immortal, a built for mobile spin off recreation of Diablo 3. It's an entirely different game, of that we're sure, though the unmistakable DNA of Blizzard's 2011 hack and slash ARPG is still there. We've got most of the same classes with the same appearances and many of the same abilities running on an engine that makes the game look more or less exactly like that of its predecessor, but with a whole bunch of new stuff a new world, new features, new mechanics and new systems, repackaged, reimagined, and with way more microtransactions than ever before. Although let's not forget they tried. Diablo 3 launched with a real money auction house that let players buy and sell in-game items for gold or real cash. This feature was met with such backlash from the community that they removed it completely from the game shortly after launch. While Diablo Immortal doesn't have a real money auction house in form, it sure does in function with multiple currencies that let you directly pay real money for power. I would say the game falls under the textbook definition of pay to win. You can spend money to make your character stronger, giving you an advantage over those who don't. An advantage in PvP, you'll have way more health and deal more damage, and in PvE, your better stats will let you push harder content. It's looking like months or even years ahead of free-to-play players. That's just not good, but also it's kind of par for the course on the platform, because once again, Diablo Immortal is first and foremost a mobile game it's just now coming to PC, as we learned a few weeks ago, but it's not a PC game and doesn't fall under the same parameters of expectations for the platform, for ARPGs in general, or for a Diablo game. It is Diablo in name, it is Diablo in appearance, but it is a money generator for phones in every other respect. And the advantage that Blizzard has this time around, compared to Diablo 3's Real Money Auction House, is that they're probably not going to be met with the same level of backlash because this is a phone game. And I want to say this clearly up front here. If we're strictly talking about the game, the gameplay, the features, the things to do, Diablo Immortal looks and plays great for a phone game. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is most certainly going to be one of the better, if not the best ARPGs on the mobile market. All hands-on early impressions indicate this and I've played it myself and I thought it was pretty good even as someone who never plays phone games. And if this just stayed as a phone game, doing phone game things, fine, like whatever. I dislike games on mobile, how they're monetized, and the type of methods they employ have rightfully so been called out as predatory, but that ship has sailed in a lot of ways. The mobile market is self-sustaining and growing, and it makes boatloads of money, and it's highly unlikely that it's ever going to go away. But because Diablo Immortal is now launching on PC as well, and fans of the franchise or of the ARPG genre are most likely going to hear about it and want to check it out, I felt like I had to make this video going over just how absurdly paid to win the game is in its current iteration. Things can change, of course, this is fluid, maybe some exact details or numbers or percentages shift here or there, but the structure and the systems and how they're trying to get you to spend money that's currently in place, let's just say that Diablo Immortal isn't straying far from the well-established path of maximum monetization that mobile games employ. So there have already been a handful of really great videos put out over the past several months detailing a lot of this stuff uh, coming from people who have played the game and have first-hand experience with the monetization. I will link those below and I definitely suggest checking out the originals, but also I'll recap some of the more important stuff right here right now. So there's a lot of basic, pretty much expected microtransactions in the game. There are two different types of currencies that you can purchase with real money, and you'll use these and spend them on a variety of things, like cosmetics for your character or materials that are used in the game's crafting. There's also a seasonal battle pass system with a free as well as a paid track, actually two paid tracks. There is the Empowered Battle Pass, but for a little more money, you could get the Collector's Empowered Battle Pass. You can also buy services like the Boon of Plenty that gives you 30 days of bonus rewards like login rewards, inventory expansion, remote market access, and increased market trade slots. Also, and this one really gets me, after completing a dungeon run, they give you the option to spend a dollar to gain plus 570% bonus extra value you from your dungeon rewards. This is just ridiculous. And all of this is really just scratching the surface of how bad the pay to win is in this game, especially 
for people who will play long term. So early on, there was this argument that Diablo Immortal wasn't actually going to be pay to win due to the fact that the offensive and defensive rating that you get from gear in the game are both capped at 10%. And since the most anyone could get was that 10% increase to damage or defense through these stats, it was something that non-paying players could technically catch up to without too much grinding. Like it was a reasonable threshold to hit as a free player. However, the issue lies in the fact that your power comes from more than just your offense and your defense rating. For one, there is the legendary gems. These will be slotted into your gear and reportedly can give up to a 50% additional increase to your life and damage per piece. So with six gear slots, that means that these gems will grant 300% more life and damage to players who have them maxed out. This bonus applies to your character across all content types in PvP and in PvE. Sounds like a good system. Legendary gems, let's do it. I want that increase. So how do you get legendary gems? Well, you get them in Elder Rifts. This is a system similar to Greater Rifts in Diablo 3. It's procedural content that has you fighting through hordes of enemies and clearing a boss for loot. The base percent chance of getting a legendary gem running an Elder Rift normally is infinitesimally small. It is just not going to happen 99.99% of the time. You will not get a legendary gem to drop. However, using an item known as a crest, you can increase your chances. There are rare crests that can be acquired just by playing the game normally. Apparently, you'll get a few of these every day if you play on a fairly regular basis, and you will consume a rare crest at the start of an Elder Rift, and that will give you a 10% chance to get a Legendary Gem at the very end. However, if you're more interested in a 100% guaranteed Legendary Gem drop, you can upgrade your Elder Rift using a Legendary Crest, and those can be purchased with Eternal Orbs, which, surprise, surprise, have to be bought with real money. On top of that, even if you get lucky as a free player and get a Legendary Gem drop using a Rare Crest or one one of the very, very few legendary crests the game will occasionally give you. Gems also have star ratings. The more stars, the stronger they are. And those free gems that you get from rare crests are capped at two stars. Getting a five star gem, which is the highest and strongest, really isn't going to happen as a free to play player. The chances are just way too small. Without spending money, you are not going to have access to the best gems on a reliable basis. But lucky for you, those eternal orbs used to purchase legendary crests to upgrade your rift and get a 100% gem chance drop are in unlimited supply in the game's cash shop. For about $100, you will get 45 Legendary Crest, so 45 guaranteed Legendary Gem drops. But even though you are certain to get a Legendary Gem, remember that there is still the star rating system that you'll be rolling the dice on, and you are hunting for those five-star gems. That is the top, that is the strongest, the most stat-enhancing item. Lucky for you, again, the game has a pity system. If after 49 Legendary Crest Enhanced Elder Rift runs, you still have not gotten a five-star gem, you are guaranteed on run number 50 to get one. But remember, that $100 that you spent could only give you 45 crest. What a shame. So it's going to be another $100 to get past that 50 crest threshold needed to guarantee the five-star legendary gem. And as if these legendary gems, which drastically increase your damage and health and are gated by a low percent drop chance or guaranteed by spending money, but still made into a grind due to the star system, as if that wasn't enough, the gems themselves can also be upgraded. You will be feeding legendary gems into each other to increase their ranking, but also to level them up. And once at max level, a legendary gem can be used to awaken a piece of gear. Doing this adds sockets, letting you place additional gems in your legendary gems. So the gems have gems and the higher star rating your legendary gem has once leveled up and awakened in a piece of gear the more sockets you have available so the five star gems are going to have the most sockets and in those sockets you will be placing additional legendary gems which again the more stars those have the better your stats which all wraps back around to the difficulty of obtaining five star gems in the first place that's made a lot easier by spending loads of money now those videos that i mentioned earlier do go into some further grand 
granular detail on the specific advantages that these gems, the awakening system, and the resonance systems all give to people who swipe. But the gist of it is, you get a whole heck of a lot stronger. And the reason any of this really matters in the first place comes just down to the fact that as a free-to-play player, you will be significantly lagging behind anyone who spends money and not keeping up with those massive leaps in stats, those up to 300% bonuses and the extra bonuses from the awakening. This also plays into you getting bonuses and cooldown reduction and increased damage to various skills. You're just going to be behind and not keeping up with that means you're going to be outgeared and crushed in competitive PvP. It means you're going to lag behind severely in PvE progression. In fact, there will be content that without spending money, you'll just likely never ever see. But it's not just some money that you'll have to spend. It's loads of money. The current estimates from everything that I've seen is that you might have to spend upwards of six figures to max out all of your gems, awaken all of your gear, and then max out all of those slots in the awakened gear around six figures, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's the issue that I have with Diablo Immortal and other free to play games that use systems like this. A little sidebar here, just because I thought it was worth mentioning, um, Diablo Immortal is already banned, will not be launching in the Netherlands and in Belgium. Now this is due specifically to the loot box legislation that those countries have and how it pertains to gambling. As far as I know, basically Blizzard would have to go through the process of admitting that their systems that they have in this are equivalent to gambling and going through the gambling regulations and registration or whatever of those countries. And they're just not gonna bother doing it. It's not worth the hassle. So they're just not gonna launch Diablo Immortal in those countries. <laughs> and when, when asked about this, Blizzard said that they will not be launching in those countries, quote, due to the current operating conditions in these countries. Guys, you know it's because of the loot boxes and the random, whatever. Anyways, to me, the biggest shame in all of this is that Blizzard could have gone in another direction here. They didn't have to heavily monetize player power, given those who spend a ton of cash a major advantage over those who don't. Because by all accounts, again, they have a good game on their hands, and this could have been a fantastic opportunity for mobile gamers to be exposed to a good game that wasn't loaded with ways to spend hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think the worst part about how these games are monetized also is that they tend to prey on the most dedicated fans, the players who enjoy the game the most and who play the game the most will eventually run up against this wall where they're presented with the option of grinding endlessly for months and years, just swiping that card. Hard. And since they play the game a lot, they're constantly going to be reminded of the advantages that swiping gives. They're going to see their friends get way more powerful. They're going to see the leaderboards and everyone at the top who has spent money, or they'll be getting crushed in PVP by players who have as well. You know, free to play games need to make money. That is not lost on me. I'm not saying this game should be free and have no incentive to play. These things aren't developed on or for goodwill, but I think there's a better balance that can be struck than like what we're seeing here. It's just absurd. The extent and the amount of this game that they have attached to spending real money is just way over the line in my opinion. And it's not done in service of making the game experience better either. That really bothers me too. None of this makes the game better. Quite the opposite actually. They make the game worse, setting up more resistance points and more roadblocks than they would have otherwise specifically to get you to want to spend more money. And I just hate it. With all of this in mind, I will just say like most other free to play games like this, Diablo Immortals is almost certainly going to be best experienced just very casually. If you jump in and play for a bit here and there without taking it too seriously, without getting too heavily into the grind, it's most likely going to be a fun experience and probably won't cost you anything. And hey, I'm more than happy to pay some money for free to play games. If a developer makes something that I enjoy playing, I'm happy to spend $60 or $100. Sure, I think that's fair value for the entertainment that I got in my eyes. Uh, and to me, that is the best way to approach games like this. It's what I did with Lost Ark. So long as the PC gameplay experience holds up, maybe I will do it with Immortal as well. But if your intention is to play Diablo Immortal seriously, just be aware these games, and this one especially, is built to push and pressure you into spending, not just small reasonable amounts like $60 or $100, but absurd amounts of money. They're designed to get you hooked so that you're invested just enough to spend $100 on those gems. And then after seeing that big boost you got, do it again and again 
And again, there's a whole nother element to all of this as well. And that's whether or not Diablo Immortal even translates well to PC. Is it fun to play on this platform? Is it an enjoyable PC ARPG? That has yet to be seen, but we will be finding out later this week. I'm gonna jump in, I will check it out, and I will report back to you. Either way though, if you intend to get invested in this game, well now you know what you're up against when it comes to the monetization. It's a really strange thing because I, I get again that free to play games have to make money. I just don't think this is it. I don't think this is how you should do it. It's just a bit excessive, that's all. All right, that does it for me today. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.